how to optimize images for web using Adobe Photoshop. Now, before we begin using Adobe Photoshop for optimizing images for web, consider these important factors. And that is this. If you're optimizing images for your own website, then using Chrome browser, you can press on F12 on your keyboard, bring the arrow icon and start hovering around certain elements. Because ideally, if your web pages only allow certain width, as in they have predefined width set, then you want to find out what that width is. In this example, computed value is 840 pixels. That means if I was to place an image there, it should be no bigger than 840 pixels for the web, for the desktop viewing. Furthermore, let's imagine that a typical web page content area is 600 pixels in width and that's preset. Well, if that's the case, when you place a larger width image within that content and yet your web page only shows 600 pixels, then you want to make sure that image is only 600 pixels and not any larger in width or else you're just creating a larger image without any gains. So keep that in mind. Furthermore, when you're creating images for web, once you identify the width, then um, work out the, the file name, especially for web pages, because Google is an image search engine as well. Let's say Google images and let's go and conduct a search let's say structured data Google example let's search for that okay maybe not let's say Google instead of an example remember that you can experiment with Google search box here to see some ideas for keywords while you're naming your images and yeah maybe that particular image is lingering here and yet that's a new content that I've published but nonetheless people may scroll down and see something that catches their eye and all of a sudden Google image search has brought website traffic that's it's always better right so therefore learn to name your images as well but we don't spam image file names that means if you can include some keywords and I am sure that you can related to the image that includes some of your target keywords so now let's go and use Adobe Photoshop to further optimize this image remember image under image menu link you have image size and you can always resize your image so keep that in mind let's press on file let's press on save for web and devices this is an absolutely brilliant feature made available to you by Adobe Photoshop you have many different file formats I'm only going to focus on JPEG I always use JPEG for my own website, but you can always select PNG as well, and especially for transparency. Perhaps for your logos and so on, then you can follow, you, know, you can set different settings here, all of which will add to the image file size. And when you're optimizing images for web, what you want is you want great quality at minimum file size. That's what you should be aiming for. Here you have different tabs that you can see. The original is this um, at 100% quality, at 50% quality, 25% quality. 
whereby you can set all that quality settings by yourself here so in this example I've just set it to 55% quality let me now see if I lost any quality as in I can zoom in to see that it's pixelated a little bit more I can say okay how about maximum maximum will always give you the highest size then select very high and I actually haven't seen any visible degradation of quality when I've selected very high and yet take a look at the the size here when I select maximum that's basically doubled in size and yet very high it's still it's still looking great and yet the file size has just gone down 50% and that's 80% in quality you can select high and then you can see the file size drop even more but in this example I'm seeing quality loss and you never want to have low quality images on your web pages so very high in this example seems reasonable you can embed color profile you can hover over these download in multiple passes that's actually smart to include that progressive you can have progressive set to three that means in three different requests the image will be downloaded so it's smart to select progressive embed color profile now that's going to be totally up to you but for web you may actually want to have that disabled or enabled because every time you check things that means you're adding information to your images and the file size will change it's smart to select progressive from my experience then you have different settings here you can actually leave these in place but you can surely play around with these settings I always want to have metadata attached all of them regardless of the file size being increased I'll show you what that is let's go to file file info here I'd like to set full metadata exif metadata first of all this is especially important if you have original images because then once you upload that file on your website then all that digital Im image information will be attached to that image it may increase the size a little but you know sometimes you need to weigh your losses to your benefit so to speak makes sense so let's go say for web and devices here progressive is smart to have the okay for jpeg images that is um, having a background color you can actually let's grab this background color by pressing on eyedropper tool and select eyedropper color that means the mat will be applied to that and you may actually experiment with that to make your images perhaps look a little bit more um, better, better so to speak blur option I actually never find a use for this but remember that option is there remember you can manually set different percentage values in quality at 100 or simply use the predefined features I find this very helpful but keep in mind that once you set everything up here you can actually save those settings so next time you can use the same settings instead of trying to tweak best quality settings for the web you know tinkering around with these settings okay if you have lots of images to optimize this setting will definitely be of help to you okay so simply save settings name it anything you want then next time it'll be available in the drop down menu then you can take things from there so now I think that I am really happy with what I've just done to this image let's save changes let's say that's number version 2 
Now let's take a look at the image file size. The first one, the size is 117 KB. The second one is basically half that. Let's open both of them up to see the difference. This is the first one. And this is the second one. The size is halved, and yet I don't think you could distinguish the quality of it. So now that's an optimized image for the web. For typical web viewing on a normal desktop or a laptop device. I thank you very much for learning with me. If you benefited from this video session, please do give it a like and share it. And I'll talk with you in the next video session.